to the Lords Brewing Co. YouTube channel and welcome to my midlife crisis. Um, I don't know if that's the name for it, but uh, yeah, um, every, most people think I've lost my mind. Uh, I bought a Jeep. Um, lockdown was a bit tough and kind of got sick of being stuck inside and I thought, you know what, I'm going to go green lane in and maybe do a bit of off-road driving and have a mess around, take the boys uh, out maybe even Casey would like to have a go. Um, the only thing is, I bought the Jeep that no one loves. And why? Why? Well, big answer, it's cheap. Um, it's still got the classic Jeep front grille and the uh, headlights and the flat bonnet, which is uh, synonymous with uh, the, the original Jeep, the Willis Jeep, uh, back in the day. Um, and, uh, well, this one is a Cherokee. now. Uh, it's called a KJ. It replaced the XJ Cherokee, uh, which was the one that originally AMC built um, and was a very popular, popular, popular vehicle uh, throughout the late 70s and 80s. So Jeep, in their infinite wisdom, thought, you know what? We're going to relaunch this, and uh, it was going through their phase of attaching plastic everywhere they possibly could. Um, you know what, we're not going to call it the Cherokee, the name that we all know and love. No, we're going to call it, in America, the Liberty. And uh, it's like the entry level Jeep in America. Now, uh, here they stuck with Cherokee, and this particular one is a Cherokee Renegade. Uh, you'll see the new Renegades, and they take a few little styling cues from here, but not many really. And basically, the, the, uh, the Cherokee is kind of the unloved one. Um, it really is not everybody likes this one and there's a few reasons why uh, but there's a few reasons why I think they're really cool um, and I kind of like it because no one else likes it is that a good reason to like something I don't know but um, I'm going to show you around I'm going to show you some of the things about this Jeep that make it quite amusing um, this particular one has got a 2.8 litre common rail turbo diesel it's got an automatic four-speed box it has a limited slip rear diff which is a clutch pack style one which actually to be fair is uh, not the best thing because normally after 20,000 odd miles they wear out and uh, guess who's here we've got Lee W halfway through the video look he's there he's there right okay the pause Okay, so uh, sorted Lee W out with some beer, because that's what you've got to do. Um, so uh, yeah, there's a few things about this Jeep that make it kind of a bit rubbish and, uh, and some things that are kind of good. The good thing is the engine, the 2.8 litre common rail diesel. Um, Jeep, uh, when they did the original Cherokee uh, in the UK, um, they imported the vehicles as petrols, uh, normally 2.5 litre petrols, apart from the 4 litre petrol, of course. Um, and what they do is take that engine out and they put a boat engine made by VM, uh, which was an Italian engine. It even had, it had a one piece head gasket with separate cylinder heads. Um, and they used, they had this relationship with VM um, for quite a while. Um, and then this one had a 2.8 litre version um, of, of, well, it's a VM engine, 16 valve twin cam turbo diesel. Um, I don't know if it's anything to do with a boat engine, but it's kind of funny to say it's got a boat engine. Um, but it's it's not a bad engine by all accounts. It makes uh, 400 newton meters of torque, so it will pretty much pull itself up anything. Fuel economy, it's so-so. Um, but this one is an automatic four-speed as well, um, so that kind of sups the juice. It's got a, uh, a it's got a proper. Um, transfer case with uh, part-time four-wheel drive full-time four-wheel drive as rear-wheel drive and it's got a four low now there's a couple of things that suck at this point this this particular Jeep 
These were the first ever to have uh, first ever Jeep to have rack and pinion steering, and it was the first ever Jeep to have independent front suspension. Everything else prior to that had had a, a live, uh, full live axle, which is actually what this has got at the back. But it doesn't have leaf springs. This has actually got springs, and it's got a triangular uh, pivot system that holds the axle. Um, so the front axle in this is actually a floating axle. Um, which isn't the best for off-road um, and also the rear axle uh, is is essentially a, a limited slip diff with clutch packs but the problem is the clutch packs wear out and then you end up with w one wheel on the ground and one wheel spinning um, and that's kind of why it's not that good off-road but it's not that bad either so we I tried it yesterday um, I literally just got the car and I took it, uh, took the boys up to an area just up, up the road from where we live and uh, I broke it within about five minutes and uh, that is kind of the old 4x4 ownership thing, that's what happens, you know, that's just how it is and I ended up underneath it, I had to get a passerby to help me out and the selector cable where it goes into the transfer case, the pin had broken off and so it wouldn't select high and I was stuck in four low, which meant I couldn't go anywhere. Um, but okay, so some of the things that are kind of cool about it are, it's a Jeep. I mean, who doesn't like the whole Jeep thing and the fact that Jeeps have got a lot of history. Um, there's still an argument of where the Jeep name came from. Did it come from just enough essential parts? Did it come from the 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 fact that Popeye had a character called Jeep that used to get him out of all the trouble or was it because it was general purpose which is what I heard a lot of people say it was what most people don't realize is for, it was uh, Willis Ford and General Motors all made uh, the Jeep uh, the original one uh, which is pretty darn cool um, so that's one reason why I like it and I've worked on these things and I kind of got a weird love for them because they're kind of there's nothing else like them in the UK. The American vehicles are very, they are different. Um, random stuff like this. There's no handle for the window to get in. You have a button, or if it's unlocked, you pull the handle, but you press it once and the window opens. Just at the right height to crack your head open, uh, mainly because these are kind of saggy and knackered now. And then, uh, and then the back door with the spare wheel, uh, comes all the way out and uh, touches the, the van but that is quite a heavy door as well um, the I don't know if you can see in there but I reckon we could get a couple of casks a couple of kegs in there maybe a nice little keg system so this could be the emergency keg delivery vehicle if we go into uh, if we have any more dramas like uh, the dreaded that we've just gone through uh, we can uh, maybe get a quick install and then we'll be able to fly to some, somewhere anywhere out in the sticks and deliver some beer straight from the tap so that's kind of a fun idea um, and uh, the door like this is I mean I know a lot of other manufacturers use it but I think if it was hinged from the back and went down it would have been a better choice than having it like this but I don't know um, this is the oh butterfly hello Mr Butterfly don't get stuck in my jeep thank you um, yeah, it's kind of round and bubbly looking, which the other um, the other Jeeps weren't. Let me just move the camera slightly so you can see it. So uh, yeah, it's kind of bubbly looking um, and rounded, which was the thing back in the sort of 2000s. And don't don't forget, this would have probably been designed in the um, in the 90s, I would think, when all this kind of stuff was in fashion. Because um, it's a Renegade, it's got little rivets. Uh, on the wheel arches, um, whether they actually do anything is another story. Um, somebody who had it before just painted the wheels black, but they've not painted it properly. They have literally got a brush and some hammer right and painted it black. Uh, and they've also done the roof rails, which is a bit of a shame because these bits are meant to be silver. Um, I'm kind of thinking about getting a basket for the top of it. Um, there's a uh, lots of things on this car that are kind of strange sorry everybody's coming and going I'm trying to film and it's the most busy it's been in ages um, it's got a lovely bit of plastic here uh, to hold your number plate which is nice um, and I think to be honest it's a bit disappointed because I was hoping for a cover with a picture of a dog or a wolf on the back there 
um, but we'll get to that. I've done some modifications, so I'm going to walk you around those uh, right now. So uh, I have uh, I've added a sticker here uh, for Clears McFarlane, um, and then uh, I've uh, I've upgraded the badge over here uh, because I wanted it to be a redneck edition. So that's uh, that's what it is now. And um, I mean, these are all available on Wish. Uh, well, maybe not the Cletus sticker, but um, yeah. Um, this is a modification that a previous owner did uh, with the door at the bottom. And basically, there's a hole there. And um, yeah, we shouldn't really poke that too much. Uh, these are the bars I was on about that they look like um, rock runners, but actually um, they're, they're just held on by two bits of angle iron. So they'd probably be more problem than good, but we'll try them out because hey ho. Um, they even went as far as painting the door handles. Look, if your plastic fades, just so people know, get a hot air gun on it first. Go over it with a hot air gun. Don't paint it with black and then get it all over the bodywork and everything because it's just silly. Um, the bottom half of this, these doors, are, well, this door's rotten, that door's rotten. They're all rotten. They're all rotten. So yeah. And then I spent lots of money on this this mod. This cost, uh, it, in fact, it was free actually. It was free on Wish, um, and uh, you know, in true fashion, uh, it's got. I put it on dry, with no water. Um, it, it's got plenty of air bubbles in it, and uh, I made sure there were some creases as well, because you know that's what you should do. It's very important. Um, so yeah, th those are the major modifications I've done so far. Uh, this, the Renegade came with the, uh, you could get, these are made by Hella, funnily enough, for Jeep, but they did the two lights. You can actually get one with four on. I've got um, some light bars. I've got an extra light bar for the top. I've got uh, some LED uh, ones for the, uh, for the, I want to put a roof basket on it. Oh, sorry, uh, tripod's massive. You get my ball patch. Um, this hella, these hella spotlights, which are fog lights, they're linked to the fog lights. They're not, they're not very good to be honest. So um, we might change the bulbs out on them. Okay, so what have I spent on it? Um, I've spent a few quid getting it right. So we've done, uh, I'll put a link to the garage that did work. Charlie, you're a legend and your boss for letting you do all these things as well. Uh, we've replaced the discs, the pads, and the backing plates on the Yorkshire for you. They love their vintage bikes. Uh, the backing plates on the rear axle where, where, that hold the handbrake shoes on, uh, we've had to replace those. Um, they were a swine to get. We, um, I, I was trying to find anybody in the UK, hundreds of pounds for little tin bits of tin. Ended up ordering them from America, from a company in New York. I'll put a link to them in the des description, 50 quid. And they were here within a week. Um, fantastic company we've done uh, we've upgraded the UJ in the prop shaft um, so it's meant to be a slightly stronger one uh, and that's a bit of a weak point it's had the engine oil changed it's had the alternator pulley the power steering pump replaced because that was not leaking um, can't one thing you know going off-road uh, I don't want this thing dropping oil uh, everywhere we go I just don't want it I mean they are all old cars are a bit leaky but there's an environmental issue. I don't want to trash everywhere we go to um, with oil and antifreeze and all that rubbish. Um, yeah, we've we've done quite a bit to it. The things that are left to do are the um, the transfer case oil needs changing. It really needs a service. I want to take the, the rear axle cover off, uh, have a look inside. It's very quiet actually. The diff in this, which is very good. Uh, it's probably had a rebuild in its life. It's it's done ninety thousand miles, so. Uh, I would would assume by the fact that it's quite quiet that somebody has kept the oil changed in it as well uh, and I'll do the front diff as well um, so that might be another video um, and uh, yeah that's kind of the things I've spent on apart from the extensive modifications to like stickers um, I've got some light bars to go on it I want to put a roof basket on it I've got CB radio to go in there the stereos in these that's one thing that most people don't realize are really good they're infinity systems and they're amplified there's speakers everywhere so you can have a right old boogie woogie in them um, it, it, it's pretty good um, from that kind of 
point of view. The only thing it doesn't have, there's no Bluetooth, there's no steering wheel controls on the, a lot of the, the later ones had uh, stereo controls on the back of the steering wheel. Uh, it has got cruise control, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, he, he drives all right on the motorway as well. It's surprisingly fine at 70 mile an hour. It doesn't, you're not like this holding on for dear life. It's smooth um, and it, it, it's quite happy. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a bit of fun. And um, hopefully Crummy Beard has got a Suzuki uh, Jimny and we can convince him to do a little video about the Suzuki Jimny. And there's loads of stuff about that. And the idea was we were gonna go uh, off-roading take Paul uh, with us and maybe camp somewhere and I hate camping just so you know I don't think Paul's the best at camping I know Crummy loves it um, but Crummy's well up for the idea of camping me not so much um, but we'll take some beers out with us and uh, once we've finished all our driving and got all set up for camp we'll uh, maybe do um, a, a, a little beer review um, and uh, then we'll set off home the next day and uh, that'll be a, another fun beery adventure i've also got to take this off road with the kids and see uh i want to get kobe to actually have a go at driving it and casey micah bless him he can't reach the pedals so he's gonna have to wait a little bit um but yeah i'm gonna take him out and to be honest this is part of it of having it is to get my kids away from just being in all the time um, and actually doing something and going out and wrenching on it and having a bit of fun and going camping in it and just being silly and getting all muddy and and just the fun of it it's just for fun so uh, yeah the only thing I could really do with it is a set of noblier tires because these are uh, they're okay uh, but they're kind of more road orientated and I'm not I haven't bought this to drive around the roads I've kind of bought it to be in the mud um, admittedly going back to the diffs again the differentials the front one is an open diff the rear one is a limited slip but they're not great um, we might drive this and it's terrible and if that's the case and I can't make it work then I will buy something else I'll get rid of it and do something else but half the fun is having a go so uh, the later one had traction control and had open diffs anyway so what it would do if it spun a wheel it would grab the wheel that's spinning and then that would then you know transfer the power to the wheels the other wheels that had grip um, but we'll see we can see I mean ultimately uh, I think we're probably gonna get stuck quite a lot it's quite heavy as well where um, certainly like Crummy's chimney is a very light nimble bit of kit and they're very capable of road so yeah so that's it so I'll do I'll uh, ping a couple of interior shots because it's quite it's beige on beige you know like you've got beige paintwork with a fully beige interior um, you can't get more beige than beige on beige um, it, it, it's, it's really beige and it does need need a name I'm thinking midlife crisis is kind of a cool name for it but I feel like that's been done before um, I've certainly got some things to fix after taking it out the other day uh, uh, sorry taking it out yesterday um, the gear linkage cable uh, the gear linkage the um, the selector for the transfer case the clip fell off um, so the the cable pops off and then you're stuck in full low uh, we have grease everywhere in this wheel arch from the drive shaft uh, gator on the in inner side so uh, it had some work down there so it's probably been disturbed it's come un unpopped from what I can see so I need to re-cable tie it um, we thought we had a coolant leak as well but seems to have cured itself so uh, I think it might have just been that the air conditioning was on the air conditioning works on an 05 crazy uh, so yeah so the, this is this is the Jeep so um, yeah so yeah I thought I'd give you uh, a little look inside um, we've got some interesting sort of weird jeepiness in here so you've we've got a massive modification uh, that someone's done uh, uh, a steering wheel cover and uh, I, I'm not, I, I'm just too frightened to take it off to be honest because I think it's probably minging underneath. Um, so that might stay. Uh, I've modified it with the uh, the new car scent uh, magic tree, which um, is actually called a little trees here. Um, but yeah, I feel like that makes, I don't have to wash it now inside because I've added the new car scent. So, you know, it's, we don't have to worry about that. 
Uh, we've got an amazing stereo that comes in these. Uh, it's an Infinity uh, system, and actually, they're surprisingly good. This noise uh, is what I heard throughout my apprenticeship, and you'll hear it now. Honestly, that's all Jeeps ever do. So if I leave the ignition on like this, it will uh, it will ping until it's happy. And then if I open the door, um, it <laughs> this one's not too. <laughs> It's probably broken. Yeah, but sometimes they ping, 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 ping when you open the door as well. Uh, it's got aircon uh, down here that works. Uh, you just press it there. Um, I feel like Dudge the mirror here. Um, your electric window switches. I'm just gonna put this down here. Uh, down here. So uh, you can do all of them. You can lock the kids' ones. Uh, the rear ones are literally just behind on this armrest here. Uh, these, this is the four-wheel drive, uh, the transfer case. So you've got two-wheel drive, four-part, four full-time, four full neutral and low, four low. So in this, you right, this is nonsensical, but this is how it works. You've got the two-wheel drive, just the rear wheels, four part-time. Now, in your mind, you'd think that that meant it would intermittently switch the four-wheel drive on and off because it's part-time. But actually, that's not what it does. Four part-time actually locks the front and rear prop shafts together um, to turn at the same time. If you use four full-time, that actually uh, engages the coupling within the transfer case. So actually, the diffs uh, don't turn together. They're not locked together. So you can use four full-time on uh, like a, a normal road. Uh, without completely trashing your diffs. Uh, but I enjoy uh, using the uh, two-wheel drive, uh, rear-wheel drive, slip diff, just for the fun of it. Uh, you've got the uh, automatic four-speed. Uh, it's got a little button on the side for overdrive. Um, and one thing in, in Jeeps, and you know, so this was never meant to be a prestige car. Um, a lot of people didn't realize that. This was never meant to be worth uh, silly money and be super expensive these, these were utilitarian entry-level Jeeps um, and it's everything's plasticky and cheap in here it's just how it is um, but with the with the later one the Grand Cherokee they kind of pushed them up a little bit and um, you know made them a oh gosh again. are you stupid or something yeah so the Jeep Cherokee was never really meant to be a sort of expensive prestige vehicle although in the UK when they first sort of came out with them they were kind of touted as being a prestige vehicle they were never meant to be um, and you can see in this interior it's all very cheap plastic functional uh, it just does the job and that's literally what what this vehicle is about the Grand Cherokee is exactly that it's grand it's got a bit more to it you've got nicer leather seats you've got a lot nicer plusher interior parts it's a very different vehicle um, and we might get one of them next um, I would really like the 4.7 uh, V8 Overland Grand Cherokee the WJ would be cool and a lot of fun to mess around with and has a really cool system called Quadra Drive which uses G rotor pumps in the diff um, but yeah it's kind of fun uh, all the warnings on the sun visor and stuff Look at that. Avoid abrupt maneuvers and excessive speed. Always buckle up. See owner's manual for further information. Luckily, I know what a hood is. Okay, so what's it like to drive? Well, I'm on the uh, cobble bumpy road by uh, work, so uh, I thought I could just open it up. It goes all right. I don't think it's going to set any records. Um, it's, it looks pretty bumpy on camera, but I think it's more to do with the fact that this hold is rubbish and uh, shaking around like crazy. But uh, yeah, it's alright. It's actually quite a lazy drive because it's uh, I've got squeaky seat, which is like a normal thing for Jeep, really. Um, you can put the windows up. Yeah, it's alright. It's not too bad. It's. Um, Apart from my squeaky seat, 
Um, yeah, it's all right. It's not too bad. It's uh, it's quite comfy. It's surprisingly quiet inside. Uh, I mean, it's not refined. The, the, like the seat has two operations. It has backwards, forwards, uh, and then it has tilt forward, tilt backwards. Oh yeah, and uh, more Jeep ownership. Um, the uh, new back plates were rubbing on the disc, so I just had to get underneath it. And because I've undersealed it all, I'm covering the underseal. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's all right. It's kind of bumpy and it's kind of lumpy, and but it's relatively comfortable and. Uh, you do feel like you're kind of sat on top of it and you can look straight down the bonnet, which is a nice feeling. Um, which you get, if you've ever driven a Wrangler, you can see the bonnet in a Wrangler. So it's, got, it's quite nice. Um, but yeah, it's alright. Nice laser gearbox. Um, you, don't, you have quite a narrow place to put your feet because the tunnel for the gearbox is, is quite big. Um, which in America is quite normal, but in the UK, um, most cars are front-wheel drive and transverse engine and gearbox so you don't really have this big wide tunnel with all the transfer case and gearbox and everything else in it it's only really I think the Mercedes and the BMs and even those have fairly slim gearboxes so yeah the bell housing uh, is massive in here uh, the, the, the tunnel should I say uh, but yeah it's all right it's not too bad um, like you can tell what the roads are like where I am. Um, they're not exactly the uh, smoothest. Uh, this particular road has just been redone, this one here. And um, they're already digging it up. It's been less than three weeks and they're digging a hole in it. Already. So well done, Kirk Lee. You nailed it as always. But yeah, it's not too bad, quite quick. Um, yeah, it goes all right for a big old plodder. And, uh, yeah, I thought I'd just give you a quick, um, sorry, just doing the slalom. I wouldn't like to try it going left, right, left, right, left, right in a in a tight, tight spot fast. I think it'd end up on its roof, but um, yeah, I just can't believe that. Look at that, you know, let me roll straight away. Where's that? Or some, right outside someone's house, outside their gate. Anyway, yeah, that's uh, what it's like. So uh, we'll do some off-roading videos inside and out and that. Um, we'll get some shots, hopefully. Um, I might invest in a little action camera so we can uh, um, get some sort of shots like outside the vehicle with the slope or something like that. Lumps and bumps we might drive over. So uh, yeah, cool. So there you go. That's what it's like to drive. So can I get an opportunity to stop? I will stop and press the button.